Do you remember this infamous moment? Vinokurov oh, came what's straight. happened? His chain's off. Slack's chain's off. Yeah, well, this is a, this his, is a, his chain is jammed. The condor has uh, gone. Well, that was all meant to be fixed by electronic gears, right? It's again today, and uh, you know, get that pressure off. But we can see here. So it turns out the rider still has some say in how our bike shifts. So let's talk about the three biggest mistakes you can make when changing gears and how to avoid them. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Now, I'm not going to make this an electronic versus mechanical fight to the death. I'm sorry, that's not very YouTube of me, but I will admit a couple of things. The main catalyst for me to do this has definitely been the fact that I've been back on electronic gears now after running cables for the last couple of years. So I really feel like both the differences and the styles of shifting between the two are really fresh in my mind. The second was definitely Shimano announcing their new group set and there wasn't gonna be an upgrade to the mechanical part. The third and following on from that is I firmly believe mechanical still has a place in the marketplace. There is no better account of that on the internet than the video that we did last year, why you would buy a mechanical group set in 2020. I think that video really presents both the pros and the cons of it quite well, but also targets just who should buy that group set because it's not for everyone and it's definitely for people. So please, I'll put the link below. I'll put the link up here as well. Check that video out, one of my favorites. Okay, we've got that sorted. Let's get into the first mistake throwing your chain. Now to do this, I'm gonna jump back into that video of Pavel throwing his chain at the Vuelta this year. Okay, let's play this chain drop out and we can learn a few things from it, pause it and have a quick look at maybe what happened, the ingredients went into it. So Pavel Sivakod has attacked on a climb here. He's attacked the group of three and it's on a climb. It's about seven or 8%, which essentially means he's in the small ring. So he's in the small ring around maybe the 13, the 15, somewhere like that down the block. And as he attacks, it's a pretty aggressive attack. As you can see, he goes to shift into the big ring and well, it is a chain drop. So let's pick out the moment this happens. We're gonna watch the pedal stroke and we're gonna watch his hand for when the shift happens. So as he looks behind, you can kind of tell that he's not particularly engaged in what's obviously in front. And he's decided now's the moment to throw it into the big ring. So watch his finger, watch his finger on the shift, which is coming up just there. Big down, big down pedal stroke and he has thrown the chain over the top. Looks down and he's gonna try and shift it back into the small ring, at which point he's gonna completely dump it. There it goes. The chain is now dumped on the inside. And as you're gonna see in the next few seconds, he has nowhere to go other than basically getting off his bike and putting his chain back on. Let's just have one last look at this in the combination of the pedal stroke and the shift. So there's the big pedal stroke down, there's the shift and there's the throw over the top. Now the throw over the top is combined then with trying to bring the chain back on the inside, which dumps the chain all the way. Okay, so that's how to do it. Well, what is the fix? And it's not as simple as just saying, don't shift from big to little in certain gears. No, not at all. Because one of the insanely good things of electronic gears is it opens up the entire block to your shifting. You just have to be a little cautious and a little careful about how you do it. And the best way for me to show you that is show you Mr. Hershey. Hershey, Hershey, I may have just said a chocolate. Someone in the comments, please do correct me. Now we are at the Tour of Luxembourg and Mr. Hershey is attacking. He's off the front of a group. It is a really tough climb. They've just crested over the top of. There is the crest of the climb. He's going to put his hands in his drops. He's going to shift into the big ring. He's going to put his power back and the camera doesn't cut back to him straight away. But I can guarantee you that he did not drop his chain. He rode away and won the stage. Let's have a better look at it. 
First thing to note, he's in a similar gear to what Sivakov offers, but I want to pause it here. Now here he's going to have a look down to his drive chain. That's not looking at his power, that's looking at what gear on the bike he is in. So he is now aware where he is on the block coming into the crest of the climb. And that's the important part because he's about to just crest over the climb here and he's going to prepare himself for the shift. Let's slow it right down. He's crested the climb. He's going to move his hands from his tops down into his drop. I want us to watch his finger and his pedal stroke, okay? Finger and his pedal stroke. So he's gonna have one more look down to his drive chain at this point. We're gonna keep an eye on that finger. So it's an up stroke, down stroke, there's the pedal. He's come up through the chain. The power goes through the chain now. It's engaged onto the gears and he is away. You can actually see him just start to get out of the saddle there, clearly showing that it's engaged. So what did we learn here apart from don't look where you're going? Well, it's it just try and keep this really simple. All he's trying to do is time the change with an upstroke on his pedal. So if you just watch the finger there, he's timed it with an upstroke on the pedal and then he puts the power through. And that's the big difference between him and Sivakov. Now I hear you asking, Chris, do you have to be as attentive with mechanical gears? Are cables the answer? You were riding in the last couple of years, do you have to be as attentive? Well, the answer is yes. Mechanical gears still have to adhere to the same rules of physics. But you'll hear advocates of mechanical gears say something like, it puts you more in tune with your gears and your bike. Now the majority of that is hippie nonsense, but there is some truth given a mechanical group set does require you to be a little more aware of where you are on the block because the way the lever throws and the cable pulls slightly changes depending on where you are on the cassette. The further up you are, sometimes the lever throw can be a little bit harder, can have a little bit more resistance to it. You become more aware of that as opposed to obviously the electronic gear where it's a button press. You're almost removed from where you are on the block from a resistance standpoint. Now, it is a pretty long bow for me to draw, but you can kind of see where I'm going with that in the sense that you become aware of where you are on the block and you may then be more likely to make, well, a Hershey change rather than a Pavel change. Okay, the second mistake we are making with electronic gears, you're in the wrong gear. If you're riding electronic gears, spend more time in the big ring, higher up the cassette, get out of the small ring down around the 11, 13 and 15. So why, I hear you ask? Well, there's at least two reasons. The, the first is efficiency. You only have to go onto GCN at the moment where every second video is some sort of science sprouting the reduced resistance from being higher up the block. So efficiency of your drive chain is definitely one reason. But the second, and I reckon, I reckon this is a hangover from people who have come from a mechanical group set to an electronic group set. And the point is, it's not a mechanical group set. As I mentioned in the previous mistake, as you go further up the block on a mechanical group set, the lever throw, the friction of the lever throw can become more, which leaves us mechanical users to kind of avoid that part of the cassette. Now your electronic gears are electronic. You're just pressing a button. So, now I'm not saying right around in the 53, 28 everywhere. I'm talking more around the sort of 18, 20, 22 area. And before you all shout, reduced chain life at me, please, please keep your chain clean and lubed. Increase the life of that thing far more than a few kilometers spent up in that part of the world. But if you are concerned about your chain life, head to KWT Imports. They have a great range of accessories. They've got Dynaplug, they've got Ride Mechanics, some fantastic accessories. They are supporting our team. They support Australian cycling. They're supporting it into the future. You guys should very much support them. We love them. 
great couple of guys from the Sunshine Coast get around them. Now the third mistake we are making when changing gears is a complete cheat from me. It's actually off the bike, but I genuinely think it is the biggest factor in 2021. And it is this, consider your supply chain. If you're looking at a new group set in 2021, are you going to be able to, well, number one, get it, obviously, and number two, are you gonna have access to replacement parts? Look, as a domestic continental bike racing team, we have good relationships across lots of different brands in the country, and we've had incredible difficulty sourcing componentry, sourcing spares. You guys know the struggles that I've had with the mountain bike and the gravel bike to even just get some componentry on that. And guys, for you as end users, I honestly think that this is the most important conversation you need to have with your bike shops when you're considering a new purchase. If you are thinking about the new Shimano group set, have that conversation with the bike shop. Say, well, if we have an issue with this rear derailleur, are we gonna be able to get a spare? There is no easy fix here. I come back to the sort of thing that we use at home, which is you get what you get and you don't get upset. Well, I would sort of suggest that you stick with what you have for the moment until the pandemic goes away and we can actually get back to normal. I don't know why those two things were relevant. That's my thoughts on it. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. Look, obviously much of that really came from the fact that I moved back to electronic gears. And I know there are so many of you out there that have only ridden mechanical and you've only ridden electronic. So I thought with everything kind of fresh in my mind, it would be sort of interesting for me to talk about the differences and how the styles of differences have changed in my shifting moving back to electronic. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. If you've just made that change, what your initial reaction was. Not the, you know, the standard stuff we hear, but more about how it's maybe changed the way you shift on the bike. I do need to just double down on this and say, I firmly believe mechanical group sets have a place on bikes, full stop. And the other thing is we're just entering school holidays, not that it's on a groundhog day here at the moment, but it does open up a bit more time. I promise I will be better on the channel over the next couple of weeks. And this is a really good time to subscribe because we have some really exciting news coming up, which will hopefully allow us to bring some really new content to you. So make sure you do subscribe to the channel. It's yeah, it's, an, it's going to be an exciting couple of months actually here on the channel. Alrighty, as always, peace and stay safe. Chat to you soon.